Hey, welcome back to Codgers Corner. Today I want to talk to you about government issues you might have with your pension if you're moving abroad, moving to the Philippines, or even living in the Philippines and finally getting your pension. So this is something I really didn't look into very much when I moved. I just kind of took it for granted. Yeah, I'll just get my pension, no problem. But it never turned out that way. <laughs> kind of a little, kind of backfired a little bit on me. It didn't really hurt me too much, but it did come as a bit of surprise to me. Basically, I want to tell you some things that can really affect your pension. First of all, there's an issue where you can absolutely lose your pension, not permanently, but until you get your paperwork sorted out. And uh, the one that I heard about in the UK, um, it was another vlogger. Uh, I think it was his name is John, a British expat in the Philippines. Yeah, I recall him mentioning something about having to file something called a proof of life. Now they have something like that in Canada, but it's not used very often from what I've read. But apparently it is something that's common in the UK. And so I'm not sure the whole process of that, but apparently from what I understood, you needed to have a lawyer notarize that you're still alive and send the documents in. Another way that you can lose your pension is if you don't file your taxes. So you got to make sure that you file your taxes. Now, the other thing that you can face is having getting your pension, but noticing that you're not getting your full pension. And that can result from many different factors. Starting with the first one, if you owe taxes and you haven't paid your taxes, then they'll deduct that off of your pension. Another one is if you owe somebody money, they can also get a court order to deduct that from your pension. Another one is child support. If you owe child support, you will also get that deducted from your pension. So yeah, so be aware of if you're trying to run away from owing people money and stuff like that. Yeah, you might have a difficult time later on getting your pension. So kind of keep that in mind when you're trying to budget yourself when you're going to the Philippines or wherever else you're going to. In my case, I wasn't aware of something called a non-residence tax. Yeah, I kind of looked up everything else, but I never even thought about a non-residence tax. And some of the research I did when I was planning to come to Canada, I never came across anything that ever mentioned anything about a non-residence tax. So yeah, my, my pension kicked in in November of last year. My first payment came in December, and that was okay. Uh, January rolled around, and all of a sudden I noticed it was 30% taken off. So I dived into that right away to find out what was going on, only to find out there was a non-residence tax of 30%. So I kind of reached out to a few people about that to see what I could do to reduce it, but nobody seemed to know the answer. I had to actually do my own research on that to find out that there's something called an NR5. So I'm telling all of you Canadians, if you're moving there, to file that NR5, you know, if you're planning on retiring and you're just getting a small pension, yeah, file that piece of paper because when your pension kicks in, they won't reduce your taxes by 30%. So buy me a cup of coffee. <laughs> See the link below. Uh, yeah, so that's a very good tip. Uh, I'm gonna tell you right now because it'll save you a lot of headache because I'm gonna tell you, if you try to make a phone call from the Philippines, even using the toll-free number they give you to call back to Canada, the problem is, is you'll get put on hold and you'll have to wait an hour or two hours on the phone. And I'm telling you right now, that's going to cost you big money just to hang on the phone that long. And if you get disconnected, guess what? You got to start that process all over again. In Canada, you just press one and they'll call you back. But when you're in the Philippines, there's no such luck. They will not call you back. You have to call them. So yeah. Just be aware of that, get that NR5 done, and get that submitted when you apply for your OAS and CPP. Or maybe your OAS, if you're already collecting CPP, you won't have to bother with that. But I'm just kind of giving you a heads up with that now. The other thing you need to know about is when you file your taxes from the Philippines, you cannot do it online. Yes, you can do some of your taxes online, but because you're non residents there's other documentation that you have to file, and that is not available online. So you absolutely have to mail it in, which, you know, if you're going to do that, then send it to somebody that you know 
back in Canada. I'm not sure about the rest of the countries, but if you have the same situation, make sure you have somebody in your country that can mail it in for you. Email it to them and have it mailed to your government institution from within your own country. Because I mailed mine, I mailed my documents off in February, it never showed up. Even I mailed my documentation here from Canada, I sent it to my daughter. She mailed it in for me on April 17th. And somebody at Tax Canada signed for it. But when I went online, it says that they never received it. The issue is, is I sent my taxes in the same time that I sent my NR5 in. <laughs> so how can they tell me they haven't received my taxes when they've already reduced my taxes on my CPP and my OAS? So there you go. So now they're... They've kind of expedited that to find out what's going on because in order for me to collect the GIS here in Canada, I need to have my taxes filed. So now there's a delay on that. But anyways, I'm kind of glad I got this NR5 in. I won't have to deal with it for another five years. When I go back to the Philippines, I'll still get my full pension. I won't have any deductions on that. So that's all taken care of. So I'm kind of happy about that. Yeah, so having all the... So now getting my full pension and everything... And hopefully I'll get the GIS and they said they'd backdate it. So that's nice. I'll be using all that extra money there to furnish and decorate my house back in the Philippines when we get it built. Now, the last thing I need to talk to you about is it might not have to do with your pension, but you should look into other problems that you might face with your taxes when you're moving abroad. Now, with regards to other taxes, when you move to another country... You should look into things about the withholding tax because in some countries they have withholding tax on income from rental property, dividends, investments, and surprisingly, an exit tax. I didn't know about that. Yeah, you really need to read about that exit tax. I'm not sure what countries they are, but look into it because if you're selling off all your stuff, whatever income that you generate from the assets that you're selling just before you leave, you could be facing a hefty exit tax. So really check into that. That one was a big surprise to me. It didn't affect me, but I have read now online that it has affected some people and some people were just surprised about it. So completely surprised by it, how much they had to pay. So yeah, um, if anything, you need to check that one. Thank you for watching. My name is Norm. This is Godger's Corner. Subscribe. I hope this has helped you out a little bit. Peace out. Bye.